It was a Friday night. My friend Michelle and I were out at a friend's house having a bonfire. It was the fall season, so bonfires were pretty much our plans every weekend. It was a fun time, and we ended up leaving a little after 10pm. That was Michelle's ride, so she went home with me. We lived about a half an hour away from where the bonfire was, but about 10 minutes into the drive, Michelle noticed something. She asked if that van was following us. I looked into my rearview window and noticed an all-white van behind me. I took a few random turns to see if it was, and yes, the van followed each and every turn. To be extra sure, I turned into a random neighborhood, and you guessed it, they turned too. And I was getting worried at this point, so I sped onto the freeway and then got off the next immediate exit. My car was tiny, but it seemed I was able to lose the van. Michelle and I laughed at the situation, and 20 minutes later, I dropped her off at her house with no problems. I also made it to my house with no issues and no van following me. I could go on with having a regular normal night of sleep, or so I thought. Around 1am, that same night, I heard tires screeching outside my bedroom window. This woke me up, and I went to my window to see what was happening. My heart dropped. Out front, with its high beams on, was that exact same white van from earlier. I grabbed my phone, about to text Michelle when there was a knock on my front door. All I could think was whoever it was, they're here to kill me. I heard my dad's bedroom door open and him making his way downstairs. I followed behind him, explaining that I think it could be a stalker. He opened the door, and all we saw was someone hopping into the white van and speeding off. I did not see a face or license plate or anything. My dad asked what's this. He bent down and picked up a handwritten note. I took it from him and read it. All it said was, I'll always love you. This sent chills down my spine. I was currently single and not seeing anyone, and to this day, we still have no idea who was driving the white van and who left the note behind. My boyfriend was turning 21 this year. His family was throwing a surprise birthday for him Saturday afternoon at 3pm. I work in retail and was supposed to be done by 2pm that Saturday. His house was only a 20 minute drive from my work, so I would have plenty of time to be there before 3. But my boss decided to be an asshole, not caring about my plans afterward, and kept me there till 2.45. I left work flustered and worried that I would be late for the surprise. I got into my car and hit the gas on the freeway. I was weaving in and out of traffic, not caring if I cut anyone off. I was not missing his surprise birthday. And I cut this truck off and noticed he started to follow me very closely. And I could see in my rear view a countryman gripping the steering wheel. His eyes lit with anger. And I was going 70 and he was literally right on my bumper, holding down the horn. And I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I'm sure he was cursing at me. And I tried to speed up and weave in between more cars, but the guy kept right on my tail. And at one point, he actually bumped my bumper going 75 and I nearly fishtailed. This guy was seriously trying to hurt or kill me. I pulled off the nearest exit, not caring anymore if I was going to be late. This guy following me was a much bigger problem. I got off the exit and quickly pulled into a Walmart parking lot. I found a spot to hide in, but to my horror, I saw the truck pull up right behind me. Before I could pull out, the countryman hopped out of his car and marched towards my driver's side window. He was a big man heavy, and his belly hung out from underneath his dirty t-shirt. He had on a cowboy hat and black tip boots. I froze in my car as he slammed his fists into my window. The whole car shook. His eyes were red with anger. He was screaming every curse word and even said he was going to kill me. I prayed to God he would just go away. I was barely 5 foot 4 and 120 pounds. This guy could destroy me. That's when some onlookers in the parking lot noticed the commotion. There were two husky men in military uniforms who walked over and started to tell the man to back off. The big countryman spat on my window and then went back into his truck. He blew the horn at me and then flipped me the middle finger and then sped off. I sat in my car in silence, absorbing what just happened and then burst into tears. My nerves were shaking 
but I was thankful to the onlookers and thankful to be okay. Once I collected myself, I started to drive back to my boyfriend's party. The entire ride over, I looked into my rear view and I was thankfully not being followed. I was 20 minutes late, but it turns out my boyfriend was a half an hour late, so it all ended up working out. But I learned a very valuable lesson that day. No matter how late I'm running, or how rushed I feel, I am never, and I mean never, speeding or cutting anyone off in traffic again. To put it frankly, me and my friends are assholes. We love to ding dong ditch, egg houses, smash mailboxes, and all the sorts. And I was the only one in my friend group who had a car, a black jeep to be specific. So when my friend group had the great idea to sneak out and go to other neighborhoods to TP houses, I was the one driving. My friend group consisted of Kyle, Jack, and myself. We all lived in the same neighborhood, and I picked them both up that Friday night at midnight. We had our plan. We would drive about 20 miles out and TP neighborhoods that were well out of our jurisdiction. Even if someone saw us doing it, they would not know who we were. Around 12.30 that night, we pulled into a big neighborhood. There were nice cars in the driveways and in-ground pools in the backyards. It was a rich neighborhood to say the least, and we thought it would be the perfect hit. Jack went first and pulled up to a house with the headlights off so that we would not wake anyone up. Jack got out of the front seat, five rolls of toilet paper in hand, and went to town. By the time he finished, all the trees, bushes, lawn, everything was covered in toilet paper. Jack got back in the car, and we erupted into laughter, admiring the masterpiece at hand. Alex was next. We drove a couple of blocks up and found a good house for him. There was a pool in the backyard, and Alex said instead of TPing the house, he was going to unload the toilet paper into the pool to clog the filter system. We said what a great idea that was, and watched him get out of the jeep and head to the backyard pool. Jack and I sat in the car, debating which house we should hit next when we heard Alex screaming. He jumped into the back seat of the jeep and said go, go, go. I waited until the door was closed and then peeled off, but not before I saw in my rearview window a man getting into a car. He almost caught me, Alex explained, fear in his eyes. Oh shit, he said, turning around. He's following us, man. Get the fuck out of here. Behind me, high beams blared into our car. I was almost out of the neighborhood, but this guy was literally right behind me. I peeled off into the night down a long road. The guy did the same thing, following me very closely. My heart was racing. The steering wheel was wet with my sweat. Jack, who was in my front seat, was sitting low, as not to be seen. I think we're losing him, Alex said, looking out the back window. He was right. The following headlights seemed to be shrinking in the distance. My relief was short-lived. The car came roaring back and slammed into my trunk. I almost lost control and crashed into the woods. I regained control, Alex and Jack both begging me to lose this maniac. Yeah, as if I didn't already know that. And that's when I saw the driver in my rear view, holding something out the window. My heart stopped when I realized what it was. Get down guys, I shouted. The air was filled with the unmistakable sound of a gun firing off. It went off three or four times. He was actually shooting at us. I had to think quickly. Just up ahead was a massive field. I told them to hold on and turned into it. It was bumpy, but my jeep could take it. In my rear view, I watched as the car shooting us stopped by the edge of the field. Their car simply couldn't handle the terrain. A few minutes later, I pulled back out onto some back road and then drove to the nearest gas station. We all shared a collective sigh when we realized it was over and that we were okay. Never again did we ever attempt anything like that. All mischief was put to a halt that night. Like I said, we were assholes, but sometimes it takes vandalizing property and then being chased and shot at by the owner to rethink your ways. Lesson learned.